have Freddie Lee. Hello, Freddie. Hey, hey, Mike. How are you doing, man? I'm doing really, really, really well. So you, you're, an, you're an American who lives in England now? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, we're glad about that. Uh, have you learned to speak English now? Man, it's so difficult for me to get that accent. Being from South Florida is difficult to get rid of that old Southern drawl. What about the vocabulary? Because uh, we have straight, we have different words for things over here. You yeah, definitely. It's, it was so uh, strange for me. Yeah, when you first came, I was very watching. much so. You, we say aluminum, and you guys say aluminium. aluminium. Yeah. <laughs> and we say, you know, pavement. And you say sidewalk, sidewalk and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, it, you know, just I, I don't, and then, that's what we're getting into kind of slang and colloquialisms. Yeah, but I would imagine that your voice makes you stand out. That people are, are you know, you, there is still a certain amount of glamour associated with being an American here in England. That yeah. that, that you know, people would kind of well, what do you do? What, why are you here? Yeah, thing. they ask me that all the time. Why are you? Yeah, you know it. I say I'm from Florida. They say you from Florida, and you here in the UK, when you can be in the sunshine. I say the thing about it. I grew up in Florida, and it's just uh, for me, it's a privilege to be here. Whereas a lot of other people back home would love to be in the UK, and oftentimes people complain, "Oh, it's too cold, or it rains too much." I say. If you're in Florida and it rains, you're looking at hurricanes, tornadoes, and stuff <laughs> like that. And when it get cold, you know, like just a couple of weeks ago, it was snowing in North Florida. Which snowing? You, snowing in Florida. Snowing in Florida. Oh, yes, it was. It's the end of the world. Yeah, <laughs> getting close. <to laughs> I mean, that, that's how I feel about it. When you hear that kind of thing, mm -hmm. you think it must be, you know, there must, something's definitely wrong. Something's happening, man. Something's happening, definitely. So let's tell people a bit about you. Uh, you are Freddie Lee Peterkin, to give you your full name. Yes. And uh, you're a singer-songwriter from Florida. Uh, okay. In terms of vocally, so I've been doing some research, uh, Bobby Womack, James Ingram and Levi Stubbs have been the kind of comparisons that people have made to your voice. That must be uh, encouraging. Yes, it is, man. I mean, to hear that, it just I just thought to smile because these are guys I grew up listening to. And, um, and they're absolutely brilliant uh, artists and musicians in their own right. And to be compared to, to anyone of that nature, being so legends that they are, I think it's a, it's a great achievement, mm. you know, in, in terms of the way things are nowadays and the way people vocalize. It's a type of vocal uh, performance that is pretty much being lost because you don't really hear that kind of voice anymore. No. And to be, you know, classed in that particular rank, I, I, I'm honored. R&B vo vocals these days, uh, for me, for my mm -hmm. for my ears, both male and female, mm -hmm. particularly for female singers, mm -hmm. just bore me rigid now because <laughs> the, the singers don't seem to have any character. New singers all want to sound like Mariah Carey, yes, yes. which is just mm -hmm. kind of like a waste of time for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and, and so I listen to stuff on the radio and I can't tell who's singing. You know, uh, I, I, it, I do the same thing. Yeah. Oh, God bless. No, I thought it might just be me. No, no, it's it. not you, Mike. <laughs> I, I, I feel the same way. There's no originality yeah. in, in terms of, of, of the vocals and the voice, and even sometimes in terms of the arrangement of some of the songs. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to be honest, I've tried to more or less try to pave a way in terms of trying to. Uh, express myself in terms of from the traditional sense of uh, vocalizing rather mm -hmm. than doing vocal dynamics, mm -hmm. which I'm very capable of doing. But the thing is, I want to get a message across to people and not people get lost in the riffing and the running mm -hmm. because for me, the message is the most important thing. And I believe to be able to sing in that particular style from a traditional point of view, people will hear the conviction in my voice and the vocal delivery. Mm. Rather than getting lost in, 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 in how many notes you can sing, yeah. exactly. So you you come from a good kind of gospel stock in terms of your family, don't you? Because yes. bo both your mother and your father are involved mm -hmm. in gospel music. Yes, they are. Uh, so when you were growing up, there must have mm -hmm. been a lot of gospel around the house. Uh, loads of my parents both used to have a lot of practices around the house and invite all of their friends over to the house, and they would practice. And my brothers and my sisters and we all would sit down and just just listen and quite naturally it you know will fall into the children to eventually uh go into singing and out of all of my siblings i'm the only one I actually decided to say i'm gonna i'm gonna take this thing serious and sing the rest of them they do other things but me on the other hand i'd rather uh take a chance and do the thing that i'm very passionate about for some reason or another people seem to think that when you are entertaining in terms of singing or musician, it's not a job. Yeah, that's right. And I'm like, what you mean it's not a job? I think <laughs> this is more difficult than a nine to five because uh, you know how it is. If you don't work, you don't get paid. And the thing is, you have to go out and make 
things happen and you have to make sure you're on top of it make sure you always ready and available to do a performance i know? get i get the same thing from my wife that she thinks that you know because i'm on the radio and <laughs> clearly having a lot of fun that i need to go out and get a proper job oh no <laughs> man no, no, that's what, she, that's what she's always uh, she's always saying uh, your, interesting story your mother wrote a song for joe tex and, yeah, she, and she never got credit for it she didn't get nothing really was it a big hit it was a hit what, what song was it the thing is and i asked her she said you know what i think she don't want to remember what it is <laughs> because she's so upset she got an invitation to go to the that's concert terrible. they shook her hand and gave her a rose and a balloon and that's right. the only thing she and got. stole her song. Yeah, stole the song. Yeah. That's a tough one. Mind you, you've had enough of your own tough experiences in life mm. too, haven't you? Yes, in, I have. In, in, uh, because you were working, uh, doing a whole lot of kind of uh, what I would call tribute music, where, yeah. you, where yeah. you're kind of putting mm. on soul shows and stuff. Yes. And uh, mm -hmm. and the group that you were in, mm -hmm. you're, you're the man in charge of the finances for the group stole all your money. Yes, he did. I mean, over a period of time, we looking in terms of dollars. You're looking at at least the equivalent of 165 to 170 thousand American dollars over the course of time. And no one knew it because we all come over here together, right. you know, and we would have never thought because each one of us had a responsibility in the group, you know, and right. he would, you know, we've been doing this thing 10 to 12 years, you know, we don't think it, you know, one of us would do that and come to find out he was ripping us off left and right. And it really killed you off because yeah, it killed yeah. off the group because you, you yeah. closed down the group. But it killed yeah. you off personally because you lost your house. Yeah. You ended up sleeping in your car. Yes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And all of that. I mean, mm -hmm. how, tell me about tell me about reaching rock bottom at that point. I mean, that that mm. that must that must have really hurt. It hurts so bad. Every time I talk about it, because it's very very sensitive, I do get emotional because I'm thinking in terms of, you know, coming over to the UK, being one of the first group to do. Uh, tribute show in terms of mm -hmm. playing tribute to Motown and losing everything. I mean, living in the, on, in my car, I mean, I didn't even know what I was going to do. And people I had met throughout, you know, my travels and I've done a lot of wonderful things with people and I thought, okay, this is the time for me to use my trump card. And mm -hmm. I was knocking on some doors, man. I couldn't believe that people were turning me away. Some was saying some crazy things and I'm like, you know, how could you get yourself in this situation? I don't respect you as a man because of blah, blah, blah. I say, you know, sometimes things happen that we have no control of. And I think when we get to that point in our lives as a friend, it's so important to make sure that the people we have around us are truly what they say they are. You know, my thing in terms of saying the definition of friend, I think it's important for each individual to make sure that your definition of friend mean the same as the next person <laughs> and, and that's the person that sticks with you through thick it, and thin that's it exactly yeah, not exactly. just a fair weather friend exactly yeah exactly. but it, but it, until you go through really hard things you don't mm -hmm. really find out who your true friends are that's true that's that, true that, that that that's the problem with it isn't it and that's the sad thing and, about it and when you're an artist and you're on stage and you're mm -hmm. talented then mm -hmm. you attract a certain type of person that wants to hang that's around true. with you because that's true because they want some of the reflected glory. <laughs> that's true, that's true. And so it's hard. Okay, Freddie Lee's my guest. Uh, we were talking about the hard things and uh, beyond comprehension, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, Inspirational Soul album that you've put out is, uh -huh. is part of your journey in that the songs were written out of that experience, uh -huh. a, a lot of them. So mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll play a track, uh, we'll have some travel, then we'll come back and we'll talk some more. Is that okay? That's okay. I'm going to play, uh, well, I guess Brighter Days is probably my one of my favorites. Ooh, okay. can, I, can I play that one as well? Please do, right? please do. Okay. You happy? Very happy. Very happy, man. I'm a pleasure to be here, man. It's beautiful to be here. So what else would you like me to play? As you can see, you know, I've got a lot of particular choice. I've chosen six songs that I like off here, but what, is there anything that you would like? Uh, great I Am. Great I Am, nice okay. Uh, see, the other thing is that, you know, you really need to put numbers here, number three. Because, uh, you know, for radio presenters, we need, we need numbers, because yeah. you know, <laughs> we, 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 we can't count now. We lose count when we go now. I say this because I think this is very catchy and very immediate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful track. 
And it's good to see that you look like your album cover in, 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 in real life. Oh man, you just tell me, you, tell me, you see some people on the album cover that look different from what's on the oh, cover. Oh yeah, loads, bro, especially Christian music. Yeah. What? <laughs> That's brighter days.